Hi friends, hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to discuss a problem which has been posed by one of the viewers and this question is how to find an open problem. Now I'm going to divide this video into four points so let's begin. Now of course the first point is about global open problems and this happens in many fields that a particular problem is very well known to the researchers in the field and this word open problem has largely come from mathematics. So essentially we see that there are some problems in mathematics which were out there and they have been solved and some are still pending. For example, you may have heard of the Fermat's last theorem and this problem was there for a long time before it was finally solved by Andrew Weil. So this paper essentially brought out the solution of this problem and then many more researchers worked in the field and now this problem is known to be solved. Now there are some more math problems out there which are still considered to be open problems. For example, the Riemann hypothesis, the Navier-Stokes equation, existence and smoothness, Hodge conjecture and so on. So actually in mathematics there is a very clear process of defining an open problem and then what people need to do is essentially they need to prove a certain theorem and do a lot of mathematics to actually come up with the proof. So this is something which is very clear in mathematics. So it's very clear in mathematics as to when a problem has been solved and when an open problem has been closed. Now, if we look at many adjacent fields such as applied mathematics, such as engineering, such as sciences and even social sciences and arts, we will see that the open problem is somewhat more broadly defined. So for example, in engineering and science, there are many situations where some numerical or mathematical or computational prediction does not match with the experimental result. So maybe some aspects do match at certain points the match is good, at certain points the match is not good and so on. So what happens in these open problems is that there may be multiple causes for this discrepancy between experimental results and theoretical predictions and this could be due to math modeling, it could be due to physics not being known well, it could be due to the solution process itself which is being taken in the numerical analysis and so on. It could be even due to the computational limitations which are present at any given time and so on. So what happens in these cases is that the open problem is coming from multiple causes and therefore it's not possible for one person to simply close this open problem. A lot of research work is required by a plethora of scientists and engineers before this research problem gets closed. So it's somewhat more complex than proving an unproven theorem. Therefore, the open problems in math are the most beautiful because they can be solved by one mathematician and sometime this person may be working in some isolated circumstance. Maybe he's working in Siberia and then he suddenly comes up with this solution and publishes a paper. Now, beside these engineering type of field, there are obviously many open problems in the sciences. For example, in biology and medicine, the open problem of how to cure cancer, how to cure any kind of problematic diseases is always there. And again, like I mentioned before, these open problems are amenable to solution only if various people work on the problem and different approaches are taken. So essentially the way to solve such open problems to, is to attack them from various viewpoints and from various angles. Now let's look at the number two situation which is more possible for many researchers to address, typically PhD students and postdocs. And these are what I would call as local open problems. And these can be classified into a few different groups. So let's start with these different groups. So the number one group could be try to improve the efficiency of methods or try to look at the computational methods for a problem. So Many a time, once you have formulated a problem mathematically, what may happen is that the computation process itself may be causing problems in your solution. So this often happens in domains where there is some discretization of partial differential equations, for example, in computational fluid dynamics, in computational solid dynamics and so on. So in these kind of cases, you may be spending your time trying to find closed form solution or you may be trying to find the faster numerical methods which are more accurate and so on. So a lot of time the accuracy of numerical methods plays a very important role in solution here. Now the second type of localized open problem which may be known to researchers in a field is that some particular physics is not being modeled well and this often 
happens in fields such as in mechanical systems where there is a particular physical equation which is being used to solve a certain problem but this physical equation itself this partial differential equation may not be a good model of that system so maybe some mathematics is required here some different thinking is required here to come up with a better math model for this system finally there is also the situation where some kind of automation may be required to solve a certain problem maybe a certain problem is being done in a manner which is empirical and some kind of optimization method or stochastic global optimization method could actually yield a much better solution to this problem. So this is often present in problems where some kind of design is involved. Maybe you are designing a new material, maybe you are designing a new molecule for a medicine. Here also you may be able to get the answer better if you use optimization or even machine learning in various situations. So these are what I would call as localized open problems very often they are known to the researchers in a specific field. And so what you can do as a PhD student or postdoc is that you can try to attack these problems using the different methods which you may know. Now the third class of problems could be what I call created open problems. And these are problems which actually you can create by reading the literature in the field and figuring out some connections between the different branches of literature. So here the strategy would be to open the problem and to close it. So one of the best ways to find such problems is to look at two different areas of research and try to take a method which has been used in one area into a different area. For example, you may be somebody who knows a lot about signal processing and you have been using various algorithms, for example, in image processing. And it may be found by somebody else that these algorithms could be used in biomedical signals and this has often been done and then the same algorithms have found their way into biomedical signals. For example, use of median filters, recursive median filters, myriad filters and many kind of nonlinear signal processing algorithms made their way from signal processing to the biomedical community. So this would be a situation where the problem was essentially opened by somebody in the biomedical field by taking a look at ECG signals or brain signals and so on and then just applying the theory and the algorithms proposed in a different field into their area of work and this essentially closed the problem. So this is what I would say a created open problem. Now similar problems could be out there in optimization. There are a lot of people who solve optimization problems using classical methods and there are many problems which are not amenable to good solutions. So a lot of heuristic methods, a lot of stochastic methods were created to essentially handle these problems. So these methods often result in a much better solution in a much better time than the traditional methods such as gradient based search and such methods could do. So you can get many optimum solutions using particle swarm optimization, using genetic algorithm, using ant colony optimization and so on. So these are what I would call application of a new method to solve an existing problem where you can essentially create a problem and then close the problem. Now the third possibility is that you could be suggested such a problem by a reviewer itself and this can happen sometime that you have done some closed form solution or some numerical solution of a problem and some reviewer has told you to do an experiment. So again essentially you, he has created a problem for you and so you can close this open problem by doing the experiment. So there are a lot of fields out there where there is a need for experimental research to actually validate things which have been going on. For example, if you look at the fields such as nanotechnology and so on, a lot of people started using different type of beam theories in addressing nanoscience problems. And so what led is a plethora of literature which was out there, but then there is need for validation for some of these concepts through experiments. Finally, I would suggest the fourth issue is that there must be unknown open problems out there which are very significant and one of the biggest challenges in research is to actually come up with the unknown open problems and many a time people who have been working in the field for decades they often have a very good grasp on the field and they try to write review papers and at the end of these papers they suggest various open problems they have come up with. So one of the ways to get open problems is also to take a look at review papers, review papers which are written by top experts in the field often at the end of the paper they will give you a list of possibilities in terms of future work and they will give you the open problems out there and beside this of course if you are a scientist yourself 
you can spend more time thinking and less time actually doing things and you can think about the big problems in your field because just because somebody has not proposed an open problem does not mean that there is not an open problem out there so you can be like format you can propose a theorem and then leave it to somebody else to essentially prove it this is one of the ways you can become famous in case the theorem turns out to be correct so i'll end this video now i hope it was useful to you and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then